You've talked a lot about fueling workouts and how important this is to training effectively. However, training three to four times per week, I worry about all the refined sugar from gels and sports drinks. Can you, and he mentions, I know Pete has a nutrition degree, which you do, uh, says recommend some healthy, less refined sources of carbs that can be taken just before or dur er, and during workouts. I'm really trying to be healthy and eat less refined food. So good on you, Greg, for keeping mm -hmm. an eye out on that stuff. Even like we, the, the whole saying of the furnace is hot, mm -hmm. toss whatever in there and it'll burn mm -hmm. sort of a thing. We, we fall victim to that a lot. That does sort of work, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great mentality, but not a great practice, right? Uh, sure. What, uh, what general principles uh, do you got I mean, on? So I have to preface this with the same thing I always say. Everybody's different. Everybody's nutrition is different. What works for you doesn't necessarily work for me and vice versa. So it's always trial and error. Always figure out what works the best for you, makes you still hit your workouts, still feel good, GI distress, like all that stuff. But generally speaking, there's some like principles we can kind of adhere to, and that's... Um, like the more sugar it has, the closer to the workout it should be consumed. Okay. So if you're if you're the type of person that needs something like three to four hours before, it should be kind of less sugary. Um, so that means you can kind of have a real meal, uh, focus on real like a you know whether that's a burrito or you know something super easy like rice. Um, and then as it gets sweeter, as you add more sugar, you can kind of bring that closer to workout time. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have pretty good luck with most like whole, f whole fruits, like bananas, berries, pineapples, grapes, um, even dates. Um, again, the fiber to sugar ratio is needs to kind of be taken into consideration. Um, mm -hmm. And then trial and error, make sure that you try what works for you and try it during your workouts before you try it in races, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Um, I would say people, some people like honey, um, maple syrup, that kind of stuff. It's like nature's gel. Nature's gel. Um, <laughs> and that totally works. Uh, it's effectively doing the same thing. Um, I would, I would consume that. We're talking very soon before though. Very soon. I, I would say that's like a hour to 30 minutes before yep. something like that. Cause you, it starts, uh, starts all those responses in your body that you need to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. Um, and then lastly, like. Personally, I do um, whole lot of bars, which are like five ingredient cliff bars, but so delicious, yeah. they're date based. Uh, they're pretty much everybody makes one now. Pick your mm -hmm. pick your favorite, the one that sits well with you. Um, and I do that like an hour and a half, two hours before because I usually work out at three thirty or four in the afternoon. So I need to eat two hours after lunch, but mm -hmm. still like keep something in the system. Sure. So that's what I've been seeing yeah um, keeping it like and those like natural bars i've found a lot of a lot of success with those things too yeah ingredients lists are very short they don't taste as strong and sugary as anything else logically mm -hmm. um but they they can be really good but that's something like you I'm, I'm eating those two hours out still yeah it's not anything like right before if i am going to eat something right before it's basically like uh yeah i mean Honey all, syrup, agave, yeah, something almost like all that. sugar, right? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. And it's still sugar, but less processed sugar, mm -hmm. right? It's not going to be like table sugar or anything <laughs> worse that you're putting in there. Yeah. yeah. Is this a question about before or during? Yeah. So kind of both, and okay. we we kind of cover the before there. Yeah, um, for sure. What have you found, Justin? I mean, I never liked the 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 gels. It yeah. Just I I would prefer to eat. So yeah. I I got into fig bars. Those seem to I, I could get them down. I mean, I, I struck cliff bars were a struggle for, for a bit to like sure. chew it and <laughs> yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, so I found that fig bars were good for me. They, they were easy on my stomach. Some people complete opposite, right? So yep. like what Pete says, it really depends on you, but I didn't, I was not a fan of gels. Yeah. Um, and then switching to triathlon, I found that <laughs> like I had to like kind of get used to that bike racing. You can find a time to, to eat and shove a, you know, food in your mouth and just sure. kind of chew it for a while. And, but where triathlon, you like you're at a constant. You're going, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going as hard as you can for. for there's no like rest yeah. period. <laughs> yeah. um, so I found that like I had to switch to some gels, and then by that time, the the gel market has like really changed. Oh yeah. There's mm -hmm. there's all kinds of good stuff out there, like less ingredients, um, easier on the stomach, more natural ingredients. Yeah. So. I think it's a trial and error, um, really. Yeah. Um, it's kind of funny. Like I, I see if you fuel, if you get into this sort of habit of trying to fuel with natural, good, high quality foods beforehand, yeah. you'll notice, at least in my experience, so I'll keep this just personal, but what I've noticed is that my workouts are therefore easier. 
And this thing that when I focus on, on quality of food, I end up also, I feel like doing a better job on hitting the right quantity of food. Mm -hmm. And then it ends up keeping everything kind of level. So like if you, and from what I've observed in successful athletes, they don't go through the huge spikes that amateurs do. Like an amateur's like race coming up, seven bowls of pasta, right? Just like spike. <laughs> and then after that, during the race, they like don't eat at all, right? Yeah, because it's a race. <laughs> because it's a race. <laughs> and then because after that, sick the pasta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> after that, they go to five guys and get a burger and giant fries and then another burger and giant fries, right? So there's like these huge spikes. Whereas mm -hmm. what I see with successful athletes is that they're constantly taking in higher mm -hmm. quality foods, but then making sure that they're taking in a good amount of food at all times. And then when they get onto the bike, it just doesn't stop. Yeah. I was going to say that's, that pretty much underlines the during, uh, portion. If you're eating really solid the rest of your life, mm -hmm. um, you'll be surprised how much less on bike food you not, you not, not that you need, but how you're kind of capable with just a little bit less. Like you said, it's a steady, a steady feed the whole time. Yep. And so start focusing on your dinner the night before your breakfast, the day of, and you'll feel mm. some changes happening in your body. Like mm -hmm. I remember just needing those huge salads, right? Like yeah. that were super nutritionally sound. They filled you up. They tasted good. And like they carried over, over and over and over. And if you do that for weeks and months, like your body changes and you oh, start yeah. responding to different food better. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I never ate, uh, if, if my workout or race was less than two hours, mm -hmm. I didn't need food. I didn't need just maybe, maybe a bottle of mix, but yeah. right. I mean, I guess that is because you, it's a right. We're in a lifestyle here. Yep. You're everything that you're putting in your body is, is fuel. So you just got to be smart about it. Um, yep. and, and try to avoid, I mean, don't get me wrong. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Definitely had some five guys after a race, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, yeah. but there's a time to, to, to do it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, exactly. And then it's right back into routine and, and getting what's good for your body. And you don't need to feel as much during a race. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that the main thing is you'll see that like, I bet Justin still fueled a fair amount during that race, probably even more than a person that may be listening to this thinking like, okay, I don't need to fuel. Right. Because there's like, you end up fueling just incrementally throughout that race to kind of keep levels topped off. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, like a, a big marker between an athlete that, that gets it. And I'm doing this with air quotes. And the one that doesn't is a rider that sees that fuel coming in, not as a way to avoid a bonk, but a way to improve their performance, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's improving your performance the whole race long, not just trying to avoid a bonk. Yeah. And, and it's just a, it's a perspective shift all the way around. And one thing to keep in mind too, is like, if you're in a position where you're really getting like improving FTP a ton, right? So like, you're just able to do way more work, way more work. It's going to change and you're going to have to eat more outside of after mm -hmm. and during yeah. just cause your body's doing more work, more work, more fuel. Yeah. It happens. And, and it always changes, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I've never locked into something and then just been like, that's my forever. Like it always, I always have to evolve it. Always. Yeah. yeah. I wish it would say the same. <laughs> <That'd be> so <laughs> easy. I know, right? <laughs> hey, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Pete. And if you like this video, you should subscribe to our channel because there's a lot more where that came from. And you can give it a thumbs up. Yeah, if there's something you didn't like, give it a thumbs down. And if you would have done something differently, uh, let us know in the comments below. Absolutely. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, you should head over to trainerroad.com. It works. That's how Pete's fast. Yeah, 100%. <laughs>